Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the effects of sugar alcohol on your blood glucose or your blood sugar. Um, so sugar alcohols are compounds that are not sugar or alcohol. Um, so they do contain some calories and they have a very small effect on your blood glucose. Uh, but how much of an effect depends on which specific sugar alcohol, which is what I'm going to talk about in this video. Uh, sugar alcohols are used as sweeteners and sugar-free products because they do not contain sugar. So they are very effective at sweetening candies and, and all sorts of different things when we don't want to add sugar. Um, so they do contain calories and they do affect blood glucose. Um, so for someone who's managing blood sugar, like in diabetes mellitus, or somebody who's on a ketogenic diet or something where they want to stay in ketosis, uh, you do need to be cautious about consuming sugar alcohols because they do have an effect on uh, blood sugar and they could interfere with your management of your blood glucose. Um, so this is the number of calories per gram of each of these sugar alcohols. So for normal carbohydrates, for sugar and any other type of carbohydrate, there are four calories per gram. Um, so as you can see here, there are significantly fewer calories per gram when it comes to sugar alcohol, uh, which is why sugar alcohols are used a lot in weight management, because it's a way to eat sweet things with fewer calories. So these are some of the more common sugar alcohols, sorbitol, 2.6 calories, xylitol, 2.4, maltitol, 2.1, isomalt, 2, lactitol, 2, mannitol, 1.6, and erythritol, only 0.2 calories per gram. So glycemic index tells us how much something that we eat affects our blood glucose. Um, so closer to zero means lower effect on blood glucose and closer to 100 means very high and extreme effect on blood glucose. Um, so here I listed those same sugar alcohols, some of the most common. And then for comparison, I listed a few other sweeteners at the bottom so that we can get kind of some context for the glycemic index for these different sweeteners. Um, so Basically, closer to zero is better. The lower the number, the better. Um, so for these sugar alcohols, most of these are one, two, three, or four on the glycemic index, which is extremely low. Zero would be no effect at all. Um, and then as you can see, xylitol is at a 12 and maltitol is 35. Um, so if you are trying to stay in ketosis or you're trying to manage your blood sugar, um, you know, we can't necessarily group all sugar alcohols together and say that they're all good or all bad. Uh, you can really just try to stick with the ones that are, you know, one to four in the glycemic index, and those are going to have much less of an effect. Uh, maybe avoid xylitol or maltitol, depending on how sensitive you are to these effects. Now, for comparison, I included stevia here, which is not a sugar alcohol and it's not sugar, and it has less than one on the glycemic index compared to normal, just natural honey, also not a sugar alcohol, that is at a 50 on the glycemic index, and high fructose corn syrup, not a sugar alcohol, but a very common sweetener that we see in all sorts of processed products, and that is at an 87 on the glycemic index, which is very high. Um, so when you are choosing which sugar alcohols to go with or what you're going to allow in your diet, uh, that should depend on how closely you're managing your blood sugar. And if you are very closely managing and trying to stay in ketosis or keep your blood glucose low, uh, then make sure that you're avoiding xylitol, maltitol, and other regular sugars that are going to have a much higher glycemic index. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day.